Hello friends, how are you doing tonight? I am cooking on the stove and you might hear some popping and sizzling. But uh, I want to share something with you. So, what I'm getting ready to share with you is, I just, so this is going to be of a religious nature and about the Bible. But I, I just have these like moments, especially like I'm a morning person in general. But like when I arrive to like church, usually like I'm on fire and I'm just like, and I'm just like super applying and like my mind races like during like praise and worship when people are singing and all that stuff. Like my mind is just like, I just have like this laser focus of like meaning and purpose and application. So I'm going to share with you something that I wrote down on an envelope. Um, comparing about how people treat the Bible and I have four ways that you could treat reading and understanding the Bible the the greatest story ever told I didn't practice this I wrote this down a lot and I'm not in my fire firefighting type uh, firebrand thinking but I just felt like I should share it with you but now this is the perspective of just reading the Bible and how you apply it. Most people treat reading the Bible and the story of the gospel from cover to cover, they treat it like Netflix. And so they're very passive, they're sitting on the couch and they're just, you know, they're being told what it says. There's no like really diving in and studying it. And it's just something to watch, it's something to do, something to understand. Um, that would be like the people who might just show up to church, maybe. Uh, it doesn't matter if you agree or disagree. Honestly, it has no bearing on your life. It's like you're just watching a Netflix episode. It's just something to watch. You turn it on or turn it off or just simply ignore it. It's all the same. At best, this is a snapshot of a story that's best described as an epic. I'm gonna turn my, my taters real quick. And so that's how I see that a lot of people treat uh, the Word of God. They treat the Word like Netflix, it's passive, something to do. It has no bearing. And then I guess a step above it. Some people are going to treat the Bible like a novel. I almost see it like some people treat the Bible like a romance novel. Well, some people might be like, yeah, you know, I see that. I can see how it's a romance novel. It's a, it's a love story to me. Well... Some people treat the Bible and reading and understanding the gospel. When I say the Bible, I just mean all, all the word. They, they treat it like a romance story where they imagine being a part of the story. When they see all the good lovey-dovey stuff, they picture themselves being on the receiving end of that. They take the blessings, but they reject the curse or the consequence of sin. You read it, but you definitely don't study it. You have a cursory understanding of what it is. There's no depth. There's no application to self. It's it's distant and fictional and without purpose or application. It, it's kind of like one of those, isn't that nice attitude. And it's very dreamy and I'm going to apply it to me. And I'm going to say, you know, that, that's the next level. Just a tiny insignificant step above the the treating the word like Netflix. Well, the next one is going to be treating it like a math text. It requires more than reading. It requires understanding of the context and the meaning. You know, you can't just read a math text and then just be like, "I, I read the, I read the steps, and so now I'm good at it." No, you gotta, you gotta read it. You gotta read it in context. You might have to reread it. You have to understand it, and it takes a lot more brain power to do so. And so it's more than just reading what it says, but what it means, understanding how it works, understanding how transfer, transformation is applied. 
and understanding what the word is and how it can be applied to your life. However, that's where it stops with a lot of people. It's unpurposeful because there's no works. It's the power to apply the word of God, but without the fruit and the effort to actually do so. It's the potential for power and change, but it'll it's just work for work's sake. It's like knowing the laws of mathematics and understanding its rules, but not applying it in any meaningful way as it was intended to do. And so that brings me to the fourth and the final um, way to apply it that I had written up. And that would be the Bible as an engineering text. You read it to understand it. You're going to understand the history and the context. You're going to understand the rules and the application of that knowledge. You're going to harness the power of the knowledge and the application to a specific purpose of changing and transforming or transforming a situation. Like you're going to get out there and you're going to like build with what you have. You're applying it to yourself and the world around you. You're solving problems, you know? That's what engineering is very commonly, is, is you got a problem and you solve it and you have to design a solution and engineering can be a very dirty thing. And, you know, if you're reading the Bible as an engineering text and studying the Word as, as you would engineering, it involves action, it involves working, it involves not only knowing, but understanding, and most importantly, applying what you know and understand. You design solutions to solve problems, excuse me, you design solutions to solve problems using the principle of design from the architect. Go and do. So this is just something that, like, it was just, I want to say it's heavy on my heart, but honestly, like I, when I get in these modes, I'm just like, like I'm ready to handle some business, and like that's just kind of how the spirit like pours on me. It's just like, like something's got to be done about this, and so I was just thinking about the word and um, how a lot of people apply it, and I wish that my brothers and sisters in Christ would just go out and do more. I wish that I would go out and do more. But uh, I don't know. If, tell me what you think. Um, I'm pretty sure that I could fit all four of these um, instances in some aspect of my life. But um, just, just something I thought about. Something I wanted to share for a while. And I've had this for about, for about a year. And I figured, well, you know what? It's about time to share this. So... I don't know. Go out there, study the word, understand it, know it, understand the historical and the cultural context, and go out and do, you know? Don't just sit in a building and wait for the world to come to you, because that's not the Great Commission. Go out and spread the love of Christ to all the world. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe if you're into that kind of thing, and love God, take care of your family, go out and help somebody. Ah.